Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this worship with me today. My name is John Hudson Beddoes. This is my first online service, um, and it's a pleasure to have you all with me today. Our call to worship today is based on Romans 12, verses 1 to 2, and also Psalm 124, verse 8. So let us pray. We gather today in the name of God, the maker of heaven and earth, who calls us away from the customs and attitudes of the world around us and invites us instead into a transforming relationship with him and with one another. Let us worship together. Amen. Our first hymn is Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us for the world's tempestuous sea. Guard us, guide us, keep us, lead us, for we have no help but Thee, yet possessing every blessing, if a God of Let us pray. Father God, loving Heavenly Father, help us to step out of the boat, to go where you lead, to be where you need us. We come to you today joined in fellowship to worship you, to be with you and to listen to your words. We know that you are with us and so Father, we call to mind the times when we have failed to be all that you need us to be. And we are sorry for the times that we have offended you. And we are sorry for the times that we have not been what you would have us be. Renew us, transform us, reinvent us and open our spirit so that we can be those people you call us to be and that we may also strive to carry out the purpose you have created in us. And loving God, let us take comfort in the words of our Lord Jesus when he says to us that your sins are forgiven you. Amen. Our second hymn is Jesus Calls Us.
Our gospel reading this morning is a very familiar story to a lot of people. It's the story of Jesus walking on the water to the fishermen who were out in the boat. Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Then Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the lake, while he sent the people away. After sending the people away, he went up a hill to pray by himself. When evening came, Jesus was there alone, and by this time the boat was far out in the lake, tossed about by the waves, because the wind was blowing against it. Between three and six o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to the disciples, walking on the water. When they saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they screamed with fear. Jesus spoke to them at once. Courage, he said, it is I. Don't be afraid. Then Peter spoke up. Lord, if it is really you, order me to come out on the water to you. Come, answered Jesus. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water to Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he was afraid and started to sink down into the water. Save me, Lord, he cried. At once Jesus reached out and grabbed hold of him and said, How little faith you have, why do you doubt? They both got into the boat and the wind died down. Then the disciples in the boat worshipped Jesus. Truly, you are the Son of God, they exclaimed. The Gospel of the Lord. Quite a few years ago, I was on holiday in Wales. During that holiday, we went on an excursion. The excursion was to go and see the dolphins swimming out in the wild. The boat trip was a four hour round trip. I think I spent about three hours and 45 minutes under a coat lying on the deck, wishing I was back on the shore after being violently ill. I get a sense of how the disciples must have felt. It was a very rough journey and a very rough boat. And that day I found out that I do not have sea legs. I genuinely was not very well. So today, in today's gospel, we see the disciples out in a boat in the storm. And during that storm, they see Jesus walking towards them on the water. We are told in the Bible about the wind but not much more about the storm. We're not told how big the boat was, how strong the winds were, how good the boat was in the water. But we do know that the disciples on the boat were afraid and the storm was bad. The disciples were fishermen. We would assume that they had weathered many a storm before. But in this particular storm, we are not told too many more details. In fact, if you read other versions of this story in different Bibles, they all have a slightly different slant. The New International Version refers to Jesus walking on a lake and not on the sea. The, sing the King James Version tells us the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. So in this version, we have a ship and a wind that was contrary. I like that word. But also what we see here, and what we need to look at here, and what we need to read into here, is not so much concentrating on the circumstances of the event, even though walking on water is a truly remarkable event, and even though the winds were contrary. What we need to look at here, and what I want to explore further here, is the smaller, more important conversational part of this story. Jesus says to the disciples, do not be afraid. He says this when they all thought at first that he was a ghost. The powerful and pertinent part of this gospel reading is when Peter says, Lord, 
if you tell me to come to you on the water, I will come. And Jesus says to him, come. Peter takes a leap of faith. There are none of us who would believe in our wildest dreams that we could walk on water, that we could walk on the sea, that we could get into our bathtub and walk around. But Peter does. He steps out of the boat. His eyes are truly fixed on Jesus and he does indeed walk on water. He starts at that point to walk towards his Lord. This is like us in prayer, in our actions and in our thoughts. We start to walk towards Jesus. What happens then is life takes over. Our families, our work, our mobile devices, our social media, our computers, our engagements, our favourite TV shows, they all come along like the wind and they all start to take our focus away from God. They are the wind in our daily lives. And what happens then is just like Peter, we start to sink. We cry out sometimes to Jesus to save us from sin. We cry out sometimes to save us from the trappings of this world. We ask to come closer to God. And as usual, Jesus is always there. And this is exactly what happens. Each time we call for help, each time we sink, he is there with an outstretched hand waiting to help us, to catch us when we fall. And Jesus says to us too, just as he said to Peter, you of little faith, why do you doubt? We doubt because we are all human. In fact, you can have a very strong faith and still have some doubts, and there is nothing wrong with that. But struggling with God over the issues of life doesn't show a lack of faith. Sometimes asking those questions, that is faith. Look at the Psalms. They are full of laments. They are full of people asking God for help. They are full of people doubting themselves and they are full of people doubting and being angry and being upset of the situations they find themselves in. Maybe we most doubt our faith in times of trouble and in times of need. Or sometimes we simply doubt because we don't get the answers that we ask for in our prayers. Maybe we feel our prayers or problems are not fixed in the way we would have God fix them. Or we feel that there is much wrong, so much wrong with our world, and God is not there fixing it. He's not righting all the wrongs. Why is he letting things happen to people? Could it be, could we explore that we are asking God to work for us rather than us being there for God and being where God is asking us to be rather than us doing what God wants us to do. One of the most famous doubters in the Bible of all time was Thomas. After the crucifixion, when Jesus appeared to the disciples, Thomas was there. He asked to put his fingers into the wounds of Christ. He was able to feel Christ's wounds. You can read about this in the Gospel of John, John 20, verse 24. He then makes a great acclamation, one of the greatest acclamations of all time. He says, my Lord and my God. Thomas believed he doubted no more because he could see Jesus. And his life was changed radically forever. He then took the gospel to India and he gave his life sharing the good news of the freedom he found in a relationship with Jesus. Thomas knew and discovered at that moment that to alleviate doubt is to find great faith in God. 
And so, yes, we do all doubt. We have doubts. But managing those doubts is what this gospel is really telling us about. We have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus through prayer and through our relationship with him. And we have to trust and firmly believe that he is there ready to save us. We have to know that when we have doubts, he is there every time to catch us and to bring us home safely. So my prayer for you this week is that you will not only survive your doubts, but that with the help and the security and the strength that Jesus gives us, you will bounce back stronger and full of faith every time and that you will find your faith and you will find your way closer to Jesus and your doubts will diminish because you will find your security in him. Amen. Our next hymn is Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. We now come to our time of intercessory prayer. So let us pray. Lord, we know sometimes doubt about faith, about you and about where our life is going. We now come to our time of intercessory prayer. So let us pray. Lord, we know sometimes we doubt about our faith. We doubt about you and about where our life is going. Give us the strength to be like Thomas and Peter and to find faith in you, to be able to, to declare our Lord and our God. We pray for the church that she may be a sign of God's presence in our communities, a place of rest and hope for the most vulnerable. 
Father God, we pray for thy world leaders that moved by the Holy Spirit, they may speak out against war and poverty, against hunger and against damage to our world and to the climate. Lord, Father God, we pray for all those we know who are ill, all those who are in pain, in body and in mind and in spirit. And we ask that you surround them with your love and let them see and feel your hearing power. In our hearts, Lord, we call to mind all those we know who are in pain and who are ill and who are suffering at this time. Lord, we ask that you heal them, bring them to you, bring them to your love and make them stronger versions of themselves, free of pain and free of illness. Lord, we remember all those people who need your help at this time, all those people who suffer, all those people who call upon you for help. We ask that you turn your eyes towards them, Lord, and give them your blessings and give them your strength and give them your help so that they may see your glory and doubt you no more. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for joining me in worship. I hope my words have brought some comfort and have let you know that occasionally it is all right to doubt. I pray that your week is filled with happiness, with smiles, with laughter, and with love and blessing from God. And I'd like to leave you with our final hymn, which is Knowing You, Jesus. Known as 
as yours to possess by faith what I could not all surpass in gift of righteousness. Nor in you, Jesus, nor in you there is no greater thing. You're my all, you're the best, you're my joy, my righteousness, and I love you.
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Today and in the days to come. Amen.